I declare the motion passed. Um, members' motion with no legislative effect. Honorable Elizabeth Court will move a motion on enacting legislation to combat false information on the internet. Two members will move amendments to the motion. This council will proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. Later, I first call upon Honorable Elizabeth Court to speak and move the motion. Then I'll call upon Honorable Kwok Wai Kang and Honorable Tommy Chang to speak in sequence, but they may not move the amendments at this stage. The joint debate now begins. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Honorable Elizabeth Court to speak and move the motion. President, I move that the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. Mr. President, for many years, Hong Kong has suffered from the harm and impact of disinformation on the internet. Those who are against China, against Hong Kong, individuals and groups have been using disinformation to smear the Chinese government and the Hong Kong government. They are scaremongers. They are driving a wedge in the society, causing tension. We have seen a lot of problems. In 2019, when there was the Black Cat riot, uh, well, in fact, it was prevalent. All such publicity could be seen anywhere. And in fact, it was the main means to um, cause hatred. Say, for example, 831 uh, killings at the MGR station at Prince Edward. The girl got her eye bursted. And then there was the rape in Sun Oak Lang um, detention center. Well, in this year, on the 1st of July, there was the lone wolf attack. At the suspect's home, a large quantity of publicity materials were found. We can't rule out that he was radicalized as a result of such disinformation. And then he launched an attack against the police. So we can see that such information has found their way into the daily lives of the society, jeopardizing the peace and order of Hong Kong and jeopardizing our anti-infection work. So far, the government has been urging people to uh, take tests, uh, to be tested, and then they say that your DNA will be removed. And then for contact tracing, it is said that such an effort is to, uh, is to uh, make use of the Leave Home Safe ap uh, application to track uh, people down. And many people are turning away from vaccination as a result of the disinformation. We have got the prevalence of disinformation on the internet. In fact, our media uh, literacy has been eroded. For media literacy, it means that some people are vulnerable to the influence of the media, and they cannot make up their own mind. They can't have their own judgment. And as a result, they have negative emotions. In 2019, there was a survey. Many uh, people would try to preempt the motives of the media, and they would be selective in getting news uh, information. Therefore, they will only choose that is to their liking. So they will only read those that are to their favor. And then it has um, made the problem be get worse. In, as of now, we are supposed to have certain pieces of legislation that were applicable to the cyber world. We know that the real world is the same as the cyber world, like uh, criminal intimidation, uh, blackmail, um, personal data, privacy ordinance, and in fact, Articles 21 and 23 of the Hong Kong National Security Law uh, are also applicable. Well, in fact, for the internet providers, uh, have got the duty to remove content that would jeopardize the national government. But then um, this information may not actually uh, constitute um, an offense. So there's a vacuum in relation to the girl who, was, uh, who has her eye ruptured. Well, there were images, there were um, articles uh, online there wasn't any direct appeal to murder policemen. So is it really a matter of national security, national safety? Well, given that we have got the Hong Kong NSL, can we still be able to deal with such uh, issues? There is indeed a vacuum. All such uh, disinformation was scandalizing, shocking, and as a result, 
uh, of uh, having come across such information, people were radicalized, and they were saying that there should be revenge against the police and eye for an eye. Now, for those uh, who have been uh, inciting people to work against um, the national government, Hong Kong government, can we make use of the existing legislation to deal with the problem? In the past, when we talk about the co-location of the customs and immigration facilities, the Democratic Party said that there was no problem with the co-location of facilities. They had video images. They said that as soon as you bought the express rail, trains and when you try to visit the Facebook, then you would be arrested by the Public Security Bureau. Yes, that would not lead to terrorist attacks, but then that would cause misunderstanding and there would be hatred against the mainland government. But what are we going to do? How are we going to cope with it? Now, of course, I've seen a lot of improvements in relation to the government's reaction. In the light of the disinformation, the government has been clarifying the position, rebutting the disinformation. The GIS has got a way to deal with it. The police force has got uh, arrangements to rebut or defu uh, debunk the uh, disinformation. Yes, there are press conferences, there are press releases, there are stand-up uh, uh, interviews to dispel the disinformation. But it seems that it isn't really working. This is all because we haven't got mandatory requirements. There haven't been powers to allow us to ask for the immediate removal of such contents. For the past, for the first 11 months in the year 2019, the police asked 261 times to have certain contents removed, but it was partially hurt. And then there were 34 uh, occasions to ask for certain articles to be removed, but that wasn't entirely acceded to. Because we lack powers, and in fact the internet service providers, the platform operators can choose to ignore the request. All over the world understand that there have been dedicated efforts and dedicated legislation to deal with online disinformation and the ensuing problems. France, Canada, the USA have got dedicated legislation to deal with disinformation online. They may be targeting at disinformation concerning elections or um, disinformation campaigns launched from overseas jeopardizing national security. In the case of Germany and Singapore, they have got dedicated uh, legislation so that they can define what is meant by disinformation and they can take action. In other words, when it comes to disinformation, it doesn't mean that we are targeting all sorts of information. For the EU, disinformation means something uh, that is deliberate. The dissemination is deliberate and that will harm individuals and the society covering online information and online platform, social media and the instant messaging applications. In the year 2019, there was a survey. In fact, among the 25 uh, economies, 64% of those who were sampled in Hong Kong, they claimed that they had seen fake news on the internet. 58% of them uh, said that they had uh, seen fake news on social media in general. So, Mr. Uh, De Madam Deputy, we do have some information and we have got the Hong Kong National Security Law, but it seems that this information is still with us. Certain people, certain groups are still trying to make use of the loopholes. Whenever they see the opportunity, they will make use of the online media to flood the society with disinformation to smear the government so that we find ourselves in a crisis of governance and polarizing the views of the society. I think there's an urgent need for the society to learn from the experience uh, overseas to legislate against this information. So my idea is that we should allow the law enforcement agency to have effective measures to address the problem. They should be asked to correct the information and there should be mandatory removal of the content. It should be focused. Anybody who organizes a platform to incite hatred against the society, jeopardizing public order, public 
uh, safety and public interest should be made to bear the criminal liability. We must have a clear uh, legislative framework so that the public know the bottom line, and then social media operators and service providers can tie in with the efforts of the government, and we can then plug the loopholes. Some people were worried as to whether this will affect press freedom and freedom of speech. We know that under the basic law, we have this freedom, but then this is not absolute. In other words, even if you have the freedom, you cannot jeopardize national security, public order, public health, or public morals. And in fact, such freedoms are subject to restrictions. I believe that for my proposal in the motion, what I want to see is to have legislation enacted ASAP to combat the false information on the internet. I now propose the question to you that Honorable Elizabeth Court's motion be passed. Honorable Gawaika. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Well, it takes just one person to uh, spread a rumor, but then it takes a hundred more people to deal with it, to clarify it. Now, of course, if you are not having false information, then you're not worried about uh, combating false information. In our society, it is saying that we should have the freedom to spread this information. This information can spread more quickly. Once this information goes into the mind of some people, they will insist that they will believe in it, despite others' efforts to clarify and dispel the disinformation. It is like just uh, uh, you have a bite by a snake, and it is very difficult to get cured. For those who believe in the disinformation, whatever they do, whatever they say, it will all be based on the disinformation. Can they still be regarded as reasonable men, rational people? In the past, we used to say that you need to think thrice before you act. But what is the lesson for us today? For the black clad violence, I think it, is being, it was driven by negative emotions. At first, we thought that uh, all law and order has been restored as a result of the Hong Kong national security law. But then there was the police attack on the 1st of July, and then people were trying to make bombs. If we don't uh, address the root of the problem, that is stop disinformation, more attacks and more bombs will uh, emerge. In the year 2019, the, that was the peak when there was the largest amount of disinformation. It was said that people died at the Prince Edward Station on the 31st of August. Um, in fact, uh, there was this guy. Uh, who was supposed to have died there, but then um, it seems that he has a split identity. One absconded, the other was brought to justice. But it so happens that, uh, according to the disinformation uh, channels, it is said that they were from different sectors, and then there were dozens of them, and then and yet it seems that no family members had come forward to say anything. And yet there are people who are highly educated who choose to believe in such. Now, even if the truth is there for everybody to see, they will not believe in that because they know very, very well that if they believe, if they then believe in the truth, that means that they were wrong in the past. So they are not willing to accept the reality. Another example is that at the U Hong Kong and the Polytechnic U, they, they were students who uh, vandalized the campus. They blocked their tunnels, they blocked the roads, they prevented people from going to work, going to school. And yet they were saying that they were the victims, and in fact it was the police that was blocking the road. So it is a blatant distortion of the truth. But how come that people take their words? This is because we are living in the era of post-truth. Well. The internet world has facilitated the spread of disinformation. Just a click of one button will send your message all around the world. According to a survey by Massachusetts University Institute of Technology, well, in fact, disinformation travels seven times quicker than uh, accurate news. And in fact, according to that survey in the year, um, when there was the U.S. electoral campaign, there were more and more articles that were of a uh, disinformation nature. 
Even in the year 2020, when there was the U.S. election, there was also a lot of disinformation. Mark Simon, um, whose boss was um, Jim Lai, paid for an article to smear Henry Biden, the son of the uh, election uh, candidate. Well, you can see that there's, we have seen this information that would uh, generate hatred against the police, against the national government, against the SAR government. We should work at the root of the problem. We need to tackle this information. Time and again, the government was saying that there would be a change of government and then luck wasn't on their side. For much, how much longer must we wait? We don't want to see unfortunate uh, people falling victim. We don't want to see tragedies happen again. How come the government is still asking us to wait? We have seen many examples all around the world. You can learn from others' experience. Make sure that you work swiftly. Mr. Tommy Jung. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I and the Liberal Party support Ms. Elizabeth Court's motion. We're also moving amendment to target um, uh, different um, platforms and uh, instant messaging apps for disseminating false information in the past decade. We've seen the unhealthy trend of disseminating false information online, especially during the 2019 black type violence um, that was the peak of false information and fake news. For, for um, search, um, online platform and instant messaging apps such as Instagram and Telegram, commonly used by young people, they believe that uh, there is no consequence of them uh, speaking, uh, making any speech online. But then after the 2019 um, black type violence, uh, we have to accept that there are many. Young, there were many young people who used uh, social media and instant messaging um, app. They were incited to commit um, uh, criminal acts uh, because uh, they have been, you know, uh, uh, encouraged to do so on such apps and and platform. Many young people, you know, um, has uh, seen their future. Uh, ruined because of such uh, fake news and f false information. Now, freedom, freedom, press, uh, speech freedom doesn't mean that we could just uh, say anything uh, without regard to the law. It, um, uh, during the black clad violence and the uh, pandemic, we've seen much uh, fake news and false information day after day. So public safety and public health have uh, seen serious challenge. The SL government has uh, indicated that uh, false information online has actually um, added to the rift in the community and also has undermined uh, public trust in the government. Now, the um, now that uh, there is the uh, the, uh, the freedom of speech is. Um, are protected by basic law and the Hong Kong Bill of Rights ordinance, but then um, the exercise of the freedom is not unfettered. And of course, there's the freedom to speak up and, and there's no regard to boundaries, but then there has to be certain restrictions. Uh, but if there are any restrictions of freedom of speech, it must be made um, by the law. And first of all, we have to respect other people's uh, freedoms and rights. Uh, that's the first consideration. Second consideration is uh, just restrictions are because of the need to protect public health and safety. Oh, na so these uh, restrictions are, are clearly defined. It doesn't mean that uh, there has there is no um, re th that uh, that uh, that we can just do whatever we want. Now, at the moment, we do not have any legislation in Hong Kong to combat false information. And, but then most um, existing ordinances apply to crimes committed online. Now, uh, on infringement of copyright or inciting others to use force or threat, uh, make threat to use force, use force uh, there are reference legislation law in place. Now, under the Crimes Ordinance, Cap 200, there's a criminal intimidation, and also under the Theft Ordinance, there's um, uh, blackmail and so on. This, all these crimes also apply on the in the cyber world. And if someone um, breached the Personal Data Privacy Ordinance, 
um, the or they breach the reference to uh, prince, prince, uh, protection principles. They um, disclose or disseminate uh, information that endangers public safety. Well, if someone does that, it could be um, a crime too. With technological advancement, uh, governments around the world are uh, particularly concerned about the speed of the spreading of false information online. They are also concerned about um, false information affecting social harmony. The public may no longer have trust in public um, institutions and governments. Now, uh, with um, online dissemination information, it spreads quickly. That's its um, characteristic. Now, the Liberal Party believes this motion will be passed um, by the majority of members here, and we want the administration to enact legislation within this term to um, gov govern uh, the spread of uh, false information online. So I hope members will also support the amendments proposed by the Liberal Party. So I speak. Google Chat. Secretary for Home Affairs. Madam Deputy, first of all, I thank Ms. Elizabeth Quartz for moving the motion and the two, um, two members, Mr. Kwok Wei Kern and Mr. Tommy Jung, for their amendments. The rapid developments of technology has brought about in, uh, convenience, but it also encouraged or exacerbated behaviours which infringe upon privacy and disrupt public order. In the past two years, during the social turmoil and COVID-19 pandemic, the internet was flooded with doxing, hate and discriminative speeches and fake news, especially on social media platforms. In fact, these phenomena are not unique to Hong Kong. In recent years, governments in the world have been dealing with these issues with legislative or administrative measures. Bureaus and departments have always kept in view closely rumours or untrue reports on the internet. They have made prompt clarification by multiple channels once there is wide circulation of incorrect information which has led to misunderstanding or negative sentiments in the society, with a view to curbing the spread of rumours and allaying public concerns. Governments, bureaus and departments put their press releases and information on their web pages and social platforms for browsing by members of the public. The government has also actively introduced various internet and social media-based channels. For instance, websites and the Tamer Talk Facebook page for disseminating information to the public with a view to setting the record straight. The Information Services Department also widely disseminates clarification messages through social media platforms. In addition, ISD and the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Offices overseas make clarifications on untrue reports by foreign media. Those clarifications have been uploaded on the Hong Kong Update thematic webpage. The internet is not an unreal world that is beyond the law. As far as the existing legislation in Hong Kong is concerned, most of the crime prevention laws in the real world are applicable to the online world. Any acts inciting others to break the law or engage in cyberbullying, as long as they involve criminal offences, are regulated by the relevant law regardless of whether they were committed online. For example, criminal intimidation under Section 24 of the Crimes Ordinance, the maximum penalty for which is five years' imprisonment, and blackmail under Section 23 of the Theft Ordinance, Cap 210, maximum penalty for which is 14 years' imprisonment, are also applicable to online acts. Furthermore, inappropriate speech published online may also contravene other offences, such as the data protection principles under the Personal Data Privacy Ordinance, Cap 486, infringement of copyright or libel, etc. Publishing information online that might threaten public safety may also infringe the common law offence of incitement to commit public nuisance, maximum penalty for which is seven years imprisonment. Meanwhile, according to the Section 89 of the Criminal Procedure Ordinance, Cap 221, any person who aids, abets, counsels or procures the commission by another person of, for any of, of any offence shall be guilty of the like offence. Under common law, inciting others to commit any substantive offence is also itself an offence. In short, any acts of inciting others to commit an offence is already an offence. Besides, we have different regulations. For example, um, the uh, Communications Authority 
As a unified regulatory body overseeing the telecommunications and broadcasting sectors, it regulates the broadcasting and telecommunications industries in Hong Kong in accordance with the Communications Authority Ordinance, uh, the Broadcasting Ordinance, the Broadcasting Miscellaneous Provisions Ordinance, Telecommunications Ordinance, as well as the Trade Description Ordinance and the Competition Ordinance. Different types of media are regulated by the respective local legislation. Electronic media, mainly television and sound broadcasters, are subject to licensing conditions uh, under the Broadcasting Ordinance and the Telecommunications Ordinance. Local printed media, whether newspapers or magazines, are required to be registered under the relevant laws. During the Chief Executive's questions and answer session on the 4th of February and the 8th of April, the Chief Executive mentioned that the fake news is a wide-ranging topic as well as a sensitive issue. At this stage, we are conducting a study on how foreign governments approach the issue. In fact, in recent years, foreign governments, including the so-called Western democracies, have been dealing with these, these issues which hinders um, the governance. Some, measure, some measures focus on the election process. Some are general measures which, apply, which always apply. The study is underway, but we... Um, the study is underway. President, I, I shall listen to members' views and carefully before giving a consolidated reply on their suggestions. Thank you. Secretary for Security. I'm Deputy. First, I want to thank Ms. Elizabeth Quatt for her original motion and the amendments by two members. The Security Bureau agrees that it is important to combat false information on the Internet. Since the Black Lives Violence in 2019, we have seen lots of false information in the community uh, trying to uh, smear the government, causing hatred and uh, dissension against the government, uh, inciting violence. For instance, during the violence, there were rumors that the government was going to restrict withdrawal of uh, deposits uh, from leaving Hong Kong, and there was even going to be a lockdown, uh, inciting hatred against the government. The government department immediately clarified that these rumors were far from the truth. And during enforcement of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the IPCC had a thematic report to point out that uh, the allegations that there were deaths uh, on the 31st of August in um, Prince Edward MTL, uh, there were evidence to show that it was entirely untrue, and then subsequently, an alleged uh, uh, victim of the A31 incident, Han Po Shan, came out uh, on a video saying that he was still alive. However, there were still people mourning outside the MTL station on a regular basis. So these uh, uh, false information is already deep rooted in society, and they are a threat to uh, law and order. And there have been uh, various uh, video clips inciting violence, and people were affected by false information, inciting violence and hatred. And the uh, Long Wolf attack on the 1st of July was one example. For fake news and extremism uh, will, are extremely harmful to society, and the internet have helped them to go viral very quickly. The Secretary for uh, Home Affairs will uh, look into overseas practices and in, to see how they tackle false information and fake news there to serve as reference for our way forward. The Security Bureau will uh, clarify uh, false information just like other government departments, and we will make use of all administrative and legal means to crack down on uh, in, for, on a seditious uh, views and false information. While we do not have a news to um, legislation to tackle fake news, well, under the current uh, legislation, we do have ways to tackle this problem. For instance, under Section 9 and 10 of the Crimes or Ordinance, uh, anyone uh, with a seditious intention or publication of seditious uh, materials commits an offence. And then in the Hong Kong National Security Law, there are various articles to tackle this problem. Articles 21 and 23 of the law prohibit anyone from inciting, assisting in, or abetting others to commit secession and subversion of the state power. Article 27 prohibits advocating terrorism and inciting commission of terrorist activities. And Article 29 prohibits conspiracy with a foreign country or an institutional organization or individual outside the mainland Hong Kong Macau of the Hong Kong of the um, PLC to provoke hatred among Hong Kong residents towards the CPG or the Hong Kong SL government, which is likely to cause serious consequences. I have to stress that the internet is not an unreal world that is beyond the law. Most of the laws in the real world are applicable to the online world. Therefore, the public should use the internet lawfully and responsibly. Any 
uh, act uh, to uh, incite violence or bullying act, whether it appears in the real world or on the internet, uh, are subject to the relevant legislation. We urge members of the public to use uh, the discernment in, um, and do not uh, be easily deceived by fake news and false information. They should not direct or indirectly uh, condone violence. We hope that the whole society can together say no to violence so that society can be back to normal. I believe members will have a lot of uh, valuable information on how we can come back um, false information online, and I will listen very carefully to members' speeches, and then I will reply in due course. Thank you. Dr. Priscilla Lung, Madam Deputy, as the saying goes, when the truth is still uh, putting the shoes on, falsehoods have traveled around the world. The law is put in place to protect the truth, not lies. Just like the personal data privacy ordinance, we need to provide protection to the uh, law-complying citizens and not offenders. Hong Kong abides by the rule of law, and it is our core value to protect the uh, freedom of, of uh, expression. This is enshrined in Article 27 of the Basic Law. However, in stri uh, striking a balance between the two, the Article 19 of the International Covenant on Political and Civil Rights puts it very clearly that whilst we enjoy the freedom of speech, we also need to protect an individual's uh, re um, reputation and also got uh, and also have regard to public health, morals, national security, and public order. We still recall fresh in our mind a false allegation against the police about gang rape um, made by a female suspect, and that sparked self-radicalization in the community, leading to violence in the street. We need to be vigilant against self-radicalization, when we also need to ensure there is law and order and safety. Now, for those who read law, we understand the purpose of enacting laws uh, is to protect the public, including um, prevention against dissemination of dissemination. We also need to educate the public about how freedom of speech should be rationally exercised. And recently, the U.S. government also accused online platforms such as Twitter, etc., of disseminating disinformation, causing a hindrance to the uh, anti-epidemic work of the government. I think this is coming around the world. We should have regard to national security, public order, and public health. In the past, there might be a misconception that what is said on the Internet is beyond the law. Still, all along, there are avenues to regulate behavior on the Internet. We have the common law, and even without statutes, we can take people to task about uh, the, what is said on the Internet, including uh, pursuing civil liability. And since 1997, I actually assisted a number of litigants in pursuing claims for the psychological or actual damage to the uh, victims concerned. As other members already talk about, 9E of Crimes Ordinance could address the acts of dissemination of, um, of spreading of hatred. But I think that in the future, whilst we enact legislation to combat falsehoods on the internet, the global media probably would suggest that we are stifling the room for journalistic activities in Hong Kong. In fact, under the common law, we do have a defense available. Say, if you publish news, if you have con diligently verified the facts, and if you're not deliberately or recklessly spreading this information, and you do not have the intention of causing harm to any individual organization in the community, then even before enactment of legislation under the um, provisions of libel, 
there is an avenue available, uh, including criminal as well as civil liability. So it is wrong to say that there is no legislation applicable at the moment. Next, as long as there is reasonable defense available, we can protect journalistic activities as long as they are reasonable media outlets. Enacting legislation would also help us to fulfill the constitutional uh, basis, especially we have a proportionality test under uh, the common law. And in the case of heightened development, as long as we have balanced the matter against public interest, in other words, public order and security, even if the dis dis disinformation is disseminated, it is still uh, in line with the law, so it is not going to harm an individual's freedom. Next, Mr. Christopher Chow. Madam Deputy, I support 100 per cent the motion moves, moved by Ms. Elizabeth Quart on enacting legislation to combat false information on the internet, as well as the amendments moved by Mr. Kwok Wai Kang and Mr. Tommy Chow. My reasoning is simple. In recent year, in recent years, we have seen how um, information on the internet had been circulated to incite public hatred, and there was a wedge driven in society. Especially in 2019, those disseminating false information on the internet caused a havoc. What happened in San Ling, for example, people tried to incite hatred against the police, and there were a accusations of a female suspect being gang raped in the police station. And there were also calls to par um, to uh, stall the operation of the uh, uh, the international airport, and for the uh, Prince Edward incident on the 31st of August, there were false accusations of um, people being beaten to death. And there were even uh, mourning rituals, despite the fact that nobody actually died. And these are invis invisible bombs that could go off at any minute and cause a lot of harm to society. We need to enact legislation against this information. It, due to a practical need and it is an imminent problem we need to address. I especially agree with Mr. Kwok Wai Kang's amendment that we need to strengthen media literacy education to enhance the competence of the general public in identifying false information. In the past, there was false information uh, circulating on the internet and even media reports uh, with smearing tactics and um, people being praised as, as martyrs and heroes. And this misinformation caused people to become radicalized. About the uh, law, the attack against the police in Causeway Bay, the um, deceased culprit was subsequently found to possess relevant newspaper clippings and materials at home. So whilst we enact legislation against disinformation. We also need to ensure that um, falsehoods in the media will not become a tool for uh, brainwashing people and radicalizing people. At the same time, we must ensure that positive messages are sent out and hammered home. The government has made certain attempts, uh, only that the publicity is not adequate. For example, for the Lantau Tomorrow Vision um, Reclamation Projects, a community or universal that, uh, co universal community testing program, etc. These schemes had failed because of inadequate publicity, together with attacks by those mounting sme smearing tactics. The government became the underdog, and pa and the government acted very passively in the face of these attacks. So I think the government should take a two-pronged approach. On the one hand, the government should staunchly combat false information, and on the other hand, the government should continue to strengthen their publicity effort 
and instead of adhering to the conventional uh, lecturing tone, the administration should make um, greater use of innovative means of publicity, such as infographics, etc., to publicize government policies, such as infographics and video clips. And I'm sure that as long as the general public are educated with the correct information, there is no room for this information to take root in the community. I so submit. Mr. Holden Chow. Madam Deputy, first of all, I thank Ms. Elizabeth Quad for moving the motion and the two members for making amendments. I'm going to support both the original motion and the amendments. Fake news cause a lot of harm. We now know the truth. Nobody died on the 31st of August in Prince Edward. The female um, volunteer did not uh, got her eye did not get her eye shot, and yet fake news and false information continued to circulate on the internet, inciting hatred against the police. It caused a lot of harm to the police, and it was a major drive for those advocating black clad violence. The damage uh, was irreversible. In the beginning, the government was really helpless uh, in the face of these fake news. But nowadays, having understood the truth, we need to enact legislation to combat false information to ensure public order and safety. Backlight violence aside, false information, when being spread maliciously and continuously, it could spread panic among the general public. It could lead to um, a panic buying behavior. I note that, uh, Madam Deputy, in earlier years when Singapore enacted legislation to combat false information, the government officials made certain lines and it's it's food for thought. Fake news not only cause harm uh, to the general public, it also causes harm to the traditional media outlets that are law complying because we have black sheep in a family circulating fake news and at the end of the day, the whole uh, media industry would bear the brunt and this would hamper public confidence in uh, the news media. And in a way, this is uh, undermining the uh, room of survival of the media industry. So I think it's food for thought for us. We've been through a lot, Madam Deputy. For some time, we've been victims of black clad violence, and it is time that we enact a legislation to combat disinformation to ensure public safety and order. We now have national security law in Hong Kong. It um, plays a definitive tune in um, assisting effective enforcement of the police. Still, there are loopholes and there are other ways for fake news and false information to spread so as to incite hatred and cause uh, havoc. And I think that we need further legislation on the matter. The general public should be law compliant instead of reading these fake news. So I hope that the government would heed our views and uh, proceed with legislation as soon as possible. Mr. Jeffrey Lam. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Today, everything in life, when you want to know something, you just have to click and then you can find what you want in a few minutes. Now, everyone has mobile phone. 
they spend more time on the phone even uh, than on their families. Plus, the availability of social media platforms, there are um, free contents available everywhere. Since 10 years ago, um, social media platforms have begun a competi um, uh, competing against each other. How can we be sure that what we are reading is authentic rather than um, a fake? Since the uh, anti-extradition bill as saga until uh, the COVID-19 situation, um, the internet was flooded with fake news. Fake news would incite hatred and emotions and escalate violence and anger. And also, um, harder to um, prevent is that uh, there are people who are not qualified, who are playing the roles um, of experts and um, disseminate um, untruthful information. Those with ulterior motives deliberately made use of these false uh, falsehoods um, to distort the truth, mislead the public, and uh, tout fear. As an international financial center with free flow of information, it is not the first day um, that we have rumors. However, um, diff um, over the years, the government has not dealt with the situation um, head on. There are people who uh, came out and disseminate um, falsehoods, and then um, they were not held to uh, they were not held accountable. This may uh, cause negative impacts on foreign investments. People can simply um, make use of a photograph uh, with um, some captions, plus uh, some eye-catching uh, phrases, for example, breaking news. And then people would believe it without checking the fact. There is this saying, fool me once, uh, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I think Hong Kongers are very smart. They will not be uh, beguiled forever. So we are very grateful for Ms. Elizabeth Court for moving this motion. This is an issue that we have to face and the Hong Kong SAR government has to face. We cannot just, we cannot simply blame those who disseminate falsehoods. We also have to blame those who forwarded those falsehoods without even checking them. How can they be so gullible? I think the government has to study um, about uh, legislating against uh, uh, fake news to, uh, uh, to arrest the uh, trend. And also, the uh, most um, used uh, social media platforms in Hong Kong, uh, Facebook and Twitter, there are um, issues um, there are, uh, there are, there's a mechanism uh, for users to uh, report um, illegal contents, for example, um, uh, obscene or uh, uh, violent contents. However, um, it takes forever for the service provider to um, uh, remove these contents. I have a friend who has um, his name used in uh, Photoshop uh, pictures. After reporting these uh, false accounts, Follow-up actions um, only came a long time after, and then um, the accounts were not shut down um, promptly. In the meantime, the uh, false accounts can continue disseminating falsehoods. During the um, anti-extradition bill saga, there were a lot of false accounts disseminating rumors, inciting young people to break the law. We still remember the chaos very well. To improve the situation in Hong Kong, we have to um, seek the truth always. As a responsible government, the government should prevent the dissemination of falsehoods and fake news. And also, the government should urge the social media platforms to speed up in terms of dealing with uh, fake accounts and um, dissemination of fake news. Thank you. Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. Dr. Chi Jing. Madam Deputy, first I thank Ms. Elizabeth Court for moving the original motion and the amendments moved by Mr. Kwok Wai Kung and Mr. Tommy Cheung. The uh, BPA agrees that the Hong Kong SAR government should uh, formulate um, effective measures to 
uh, arrest dissemination of falsehoods on the internet. We are using social media platforms and instant messaging apps every day. But it seems that uh, these are uh, double-edged swords. On one hand, it brings a lot of convenience for um, our communication. However, there are also undesirable side effects, especially um, the issue of um, the prevalence of falsehoods uh, online uh, is of our concern. We are very um, familiar with the uh, problem. In the past two years, a lot of um, falsehoods have been disseminated online. During the black clad uh, violence, there were people who claimed that the police had killed people um, in the Prince uh, Edward station. And um, there were even accusations uh, that the police um, had got, uh, got gotten rid of um, the uh, the dead bodies. And there were also accusations that uh, the police um, uh, sexually assaulted um, female detainees in Sanok Ling. And also there are um, websites teaching people to uh, build homemade uh, petrol bombs and uh, explosives. These are beyond the moral lines. During the um, 2019 COVID pandemic, with the support of the central government, the Hong Kong SAR government rolled out a um, community testing program in Hong Kong. But there were people who disperse, um, who uh, uh, disseminate uh, rumors online that um, the information, DNA information uh, gathered uh, from the community testing uh, regime would be sent to the central government. And um, in July, um, there was uh, someone who was self, who was uh, self radicalized with online information and stabbed a police officer. And then afterwards, there were people who disseminate uh, falsehoods to incite terrorism. It shows us that uh, with the prevalence of falsehoods and fake news online, the public would be misled, and also those uh, with um, immature minds would be um, uh, poisoned. It would also uh, create uh, social rifts and affect social uh, order. We have to deal with the situation head on. Madam Deputy, the administration has reiterated that under the existing legislation, most of the uh, Legislation uh, to prevent crimes in the real world will be applicable to the virtual world online. However, dissemination of internet falsehoods has its own characteristics. It is very speedy and also it is ever changing. Within a very short, short period of time, uh, these falsehoods can distort uh, the truth and um, change um, the, uh, the uh, course of the events. So there is the need to legislate against these forces. In European countries and the North American countries, as well as, uh, as, well as uh, Singapore, legislations have been um, uh, implemented to stem rumors and uh, manipulation of, of forces. The government should draw reference from um, overseas uh, jurisdiction to enhance our system and legislation to uh, speed up the removal of problematic contents online, as well as enhancing the uh, punishments for deterrence effects. And also, a dedicated department should be set up to make use of artificial intelligence and big data to screen falsehoods online. And also, there should be a one-stop platform um, to uh, fact-check and uh, eliminate uh, falsehoods. We should stem the growth of disinformation at a spot to prevent um, festering of the issue. And also education efforts has to be uh, made to enhance um, the media literacy of the uh, people uh, so that they will not be exploited to uh, further these forces. There are people who are worried that um, by, attack, by addressing the issue, um, freedom of speech and freedom of the press uh, might be affected. But I think um, this is due to misunderstanding. The freedom, there's difference between the freedom of making use of the internet to disseminate uh, falsehoods uh, and freedom of press. We have learned a bit of lessons in the 2019 Black Cloud Violence episode. I also submit, Madam Deputy, I sub support the motion. Mrs. Regina Ip. Madam Deputy, I speak in support of the original motion moved by Ms. Elizabeth Quartz and the amendments moved by Mr. Kwok Wai Kung and Mr. Tommy Cheung. I thank them for moving this motion so that um, 
we can debate the important topic. In the past few years, uh, falsehoods have been disseminated online and on uh, printed media. It caused um, a lot of harm to society. In 2019, during the Black Cloud violence, there were two major uh, fake news. One was mentioned by Dr. Lo Wai Kwok that on the um, 31st of August in Chim Sa Choi, uh, the police killed someone. There were rumors that um, there were a lot of rumors, and um, the number of victims, the alleged victims, um, uh, increased. And there were people who uh, paid tribute by laying white flowers in front of the um, MTR station. And there were people who claimed that in Santok Ling, some detainees were sexually assaulted by the police. These are very serious falsehoods which incite hatred and fear um, to the police. Strictly speaking, they have contravened um, the incitement um, under the crimes ordinance and uh, Section 10 as well. We should hold um, those disseminated uh, these falsehoods um, accountable. And also, uh, earlier on, during the anti-extradition bill um, movement, there were also people who disseminated falsehoods. I have um, watched a video clip saying that if the bill was passed, then those um, people who had a grudge with the um, police in the mainland would be arrested in Hong Kong. Before you can find a lawyer, they would be sent to China. So these are malicious uh, forces. However, the government's hands were tied. They could not suppress the uh, dissemination of these uh, video clips. I'm also told that in Chunwan, someone has been giving out pamphlets telling the new arrivals that if the uh, bill is passed, the um, mainland police would uh, find you and arrest you, and you would lose your PRH unit. I knew someone who is a masseuse. Um, she is a new arrival. She uh, learned to become a masseur um, from uh, the FTU course. However, she was afraid that she would be uh, sent back, and then she joined the protest. So we have to remove these uh, falsehoods online once we identify them. And for those people, if we can catch them, we should prosecute them. They should be prosecuted under Section 9 and 10 of the Crimes uh, of Criminal Procedures uh, Ordinance or the new law. To legislate against um, false information on the internet, there is the each the problem of enforcement. We receive a lot of information on the uh, mobile phone every day. Sometimes we would forward them, and we don't know whether they are true. So there may be pe so there are worries that uh, we would be uh, breaking the law inadvertently. But we don't have to worry because there are other common law jurisdictions, for example, the UK, which has considered legislating for it. Now, the UK, the, um, the Home Secretary is uh, carrying out a consultation uh, to uh, tighten the national security law. And they are studying the issue of um, disseminating falsehood online. And they uh, recommend a test. That is the uh, subjective test. Whether there's reason to believe that the person who disseminates the information knowingly uh, disseminates uh, these information um, maliciously, even they know that harm would be caused. So this is the uh, uh, and also there's the, um, for example, um, under the subjective test, if you tell someone that um, the and the extradition bill is passed, you will be sent to China um, without a chance of legal representation. Then this is obviously um, breaking the law. For those who forwarded. Falsehoods are unknowingly, they would be, uh, they, be they would not be um, caught by the law. So there are um, precedences in other jurisdictions as well. Even if we legislate um, for, uh, if, even if we legislate against false information on the internet, we would not um, undermine freedom. Thank you.
Miss Eunice Young, Madam Deputy, since black hat violence in 2019, fake news, false information, disinformation have been circulating on the internet and it's getting more and more serious. Many young people were brainwashed, they were misled, uh, leading to acts that cause a lot of harm to society. We must not undermine the power of disinformation. However, at the moment, there isn't a lot of regulation of uh, speech on the internet. Anyone can say whatever on the internet, and there are also suggestions that uh, people who um, or what is said on the internet is beyond the law. Cyberbullying, bot doxing, these are getting more and more serious uh, nowadays, and there are people who deliberately. Um, make use of the internet to spread falsehoods with a view to disrupting social order and threatening the safety of individuals and even national security. The question, the problem is getting more and more serious. People are helpless as to how they could verify the uh, authenticity of information on the internet. We should curb the problem from spreading, and the government should make an all-out effort and say no to fake news. For those who intentionally spread a falsehood, we need to say no to them, and in order to stem the problem, we need to enact legislation. And that is why I support Ms. Kwok's motion and Mr. Kwok and Mr. Zhang's amendments. In May this year, an organization conducted a survey in relation to speech on the internet, and over 300 responses have been received. And over 60% of the respondents agree that there is this trend of circulating fake news on the internet. But at the moment, there isn't enough legislation to tackle the problem. So. The SAR government also noticed how serious the problem is. Uh, Mr. Tang, the Secretary for Security, last week opined in this council that this information causes a lot of harm to the public and the police, and things should be done to tackle the uh, the uh, problem and the uh, incumbent police commissioner also agrees that um, police public relations are undermined because of fake news and misinformation. Even parents are, are helpless. And I think we all agree that more should be done to curb the spread of false information and fake news. Mr. Kwok Wai Kung, in his amendment, mentions that many countries have enacted legislation to combat disinformation, such as U.S., uh, Germany, Singapore, etc. And in 2019, Singapore enacted the Protection from Online Falsehoods and Manipulation Act. The purpose is to protect the public from falsehoods on the internet and the the act targets people who s deliberately spread s such news except uh, for the purpose of parody etc comparing to the legislation in germany germany only regulates social media platforms with over 2 million users registered as well as um Platform, online platforms with over 5 million visitors. So the scope of the Singaporean the legislation is much wider. For those who deliberately s disseminate this information, uh, the, uh, a financial penalty of 291,000 Hong Kong dollars will be imposed. That is 50,000 Singaporean dollars uh, on him. And we therefore must enact legislation that is suitable to our situation in Hong Kong. And our next gen generation will be victims of a false information. There are False informa there are false information and news relating to uh, COVID-19, and that would um, s deter people from uh, taking the vaccine shot. Uh, this will undermine the, pol the government's anti-epidemic work so that people would become um, radicalized. 
and that is why we have the imminent need to enact legislation to tackle this disinformation. I so submit. I support the original motion and the uh, and the amendments. Mr. Kenneth Lau. Madam Deputy, I support the original motion moved by Ms. Elizabeth Quad and Mr. Quad and Mr. Tommy Jones amendments. The circulation of false information and fake news on the internet is getting more and more uh, serious, especially during black clad violence. Different sources of disinformation kept circulating uh, news on the internet, leading to uh, a boost for the destabilizing anti-China forces and the black clad protesters so that they launch attacked, attacks against our country as well as Hong Kong to undermine national safety. The national security law of the Hong Kong SAR enacted earlier completely smashed the so-called color revolution so that we, re we restore order from chaos and we're gradually returning to normal. As evidence shows, Hong Kong continues to be an international financial center and we've been able to weather the storm. However, there is no legislative framework in Hong Kong for regulating this information. There are false information and fake news against China and against the police, inciting people to take a radical acts. In um, earlier this month, a uh, culprit hurled petrol bomb at the uh, government uh, house. And there was a low wolf attack, terrorist attack uh, on a police officer in Causeway Bay, and that lone wolf assailant committed suicide later. Afterwards, on the internet, there were um, there were uh, words of mourning for the uh, lone wolf attacker, and the Hong Kong Youth Student Union even expressed condolences and thanked the lone wolf assailant for his sacrifice as a martyr. This has reached the bottom line of our moral standards. The mastermind of circulating the false information on the internet could continue to drive a wedge in society and cause a repeat of black clad violence because we do not have a legislative framework to tackle this information. The government should spare no effort in preventing the spread of in this information on the internet. It is an imminent task. Around the world, different governments have expressed concerns about falsehoods on the internet and th their impact. In 2019, Singapore enacted the Protection from Online Falsehoods and Manipulation Act, targeting platforms which disseminate falsehoods that might undermine national security or public safety. In 2017, Germany enacted the Network Enforcement Act to strengthen legislation against speech that incited hatred. In the U.S., in 2017, they enacted the Counter-Foreign Propaganda and Disinformation Act, that's in 2016, to combat false information. So the spreading of false information and fake news could paralyze the government's operation. It, they would also threaten national security. Even Western uh, countries have legislation against falsehoods on the internet. We should learn our lesson, and the Hong Kong SAL government should enact legislation as soon as possible to provide safeguards and to restore public order and safety to ensure the uh, smooth sailing of one country, two systems principle. 
I saw something. It's a Tony chair. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Recently, some politicians have openly criticized Facebook for the failure in curbing the spread of falsehoods and fake news. And this is, in effect, um, homicide. This is, in fact, Joe Biden, the US president, uh, who always advocates freedoms uh, and rights of individuals, etc., and democracy. While he was talking about the uh, extensive circulation of fake news about COVID-19 vaccination, because the fake news would cause uh, the uh, stall in the vaccination rate and for infection rate in the US to go up. But what is uh, ironic is that um, the US government would uh, resort to uh, fake news, say, about uh, the Xinjiang cotton um, and the forced labor, and also news that would undermine Hong Kong's uh, prosperity and stability. This is no different from massive weapon in order to meddle in other countries' affairs. During black clad violence, the mutually destructive camp also came up with disinformation and fake messages in order to incite hatred and draw, draw, um, drive a divide in society. The most infamous ones included the uh, um, the uh, lady who got uh, who claimed to have her eye shot, and also what have the uh, rape in Sanok Leng, as well as uh, somebody being beaten to death in Prince Edward Station. These fake news even came with graphics. Now we know that none of it is true. Nobody died in Prince Edward. The girl had both her eyes uh, all right, but the damage of fall. The image done to the police and the government by false information is long lasting. Many young people are still believing in these fake news and messages, and they are skeptical about every word the government utters. These actually would lead to a hotbed for lone wolf attackers uh, to emerge. Now that we have restored order from chaos and with the enactment of national security law, we no longer have such fake news about national security and hatred against the police. On the other hand, we have fake um, news about the COVID-19 uh, vaccines and anti-epidemic work of the government, including the Leave Home Safe app, uh, which serves uh, serves to um, spy on people, and also the China manufactured vaccines having low efficacy, etc. These would cause the inoculation rate to uh, be stagnant, so that we cannot resume cross-boundary activities. And their purpose is, of course, mutual destruction. In recent months, when the government clarified fake news and addressed rumors, the government had taken a more active approach. However, 100 pieces of authentic news on the internet would not would will still be uh, outpowered by one piece of fake news. It is impossible to or practically impossible to prove something that has not happened. So I am in support of Miss Elizabeth Quart's motion to tackle this information. In principle, I support her. Many countries which advocates democracy and freedoms also have various legislation to tackle false information. Of course, we need to abide by the proportionality principle. When we enact legislation, there should be clarity. And the overall purpose uh, will be to strike a balance between protecting um, journalistic activities and safeguarding individual freedoms. Dr. Zheng Shongtai, 
Thank you, Madam Deputy. Concerning legislating to uh, to combat false information on the internet, I think there are um, uh, room for debate concerning uh, whether the legislation should be implemented. Actually, we have um, some legislation to deal with or regulate false information or fake news on an individual level for uh, those leg legislations um, relating to libel or uh, they would be categorized under um, those uh, which combat um, fake news because it would cause um, damage uh, to individuals. Of course, there are thresholds to fulfill. For example, you have to prove the um, uh, causal relationship and also um, to prove that um, personal damages have been suffered in order to file a case. Besides the individual level, we have similar legislations. For example, at the Securities and Futures Ordinance, there are relevant provisions concerning benefiting uh, from the spreading of uh, falsehoods and um, make gains from uh, speculation. So to be honest, we have laws to deal with uh, dissemination of falsehoods. Now we are discussing a whole new topic, that is um, national security. I think uh, Mrs. Regina Ip would be well versed in this topic. In the colonial era, under the uh, public orders uh, ordinance, there were the so-called uh, false information offenses. That should be section uh, 10 or something under the public orders uh, ordinance. In the 1980s and the 90s, um, the law was um, abolished under the um, Provisional Legislative Council. So we did have similar offenses under the colonial era. In the past 20 or 30 years, we are moving towards an open society. So we are abolishing this kind of laws. The background is we have established um, a mechanism of mutual trust in the community. That's why I think there is room uh, for concern on the justifications of the legislation. In the past, um, we have different perspectives on how we should maintain um, the um, uh, long-term governance. I don't think we can prevent what um, we can control what people say. From history, we know that no matter how hard we try to control what people say, well, people would be suspect, uh, suspectful of each other because of the things we say. So I don't think that uh, by legislating to combat false information on the internet to control what people say, it would be beneficial in the long run. If you are focusing on the past three to five years, well, whether there is a need to um, legislate against uh, dissemination of falsehood, well, I think it, it can be discussed. However, there should be one focus. That is, we should base the discussion on the premises of um, truthful representation. Actually, I have made a, a mistake in the past, a very serious mistake. I was uh, sent a, a photograph um, claiming that because of the man quarter typhoon, uh, the uh, glass window of the uh, express well uh, was um, broken. Well, that was uh, he was my um, constituent. That's why I believed him. However, in the end, I found out it's to I found it, found it out to be uh, incorrect. So that is um, false. Now, lately, um, there are rumors that because of um, the uh, seriousness of the um, epidemic in uh, Guangzhou, the return to Hong Kong scheme would be suspended. In the end, uh, they found out it, they found it to be untrue, and then they reverted the uh, decision. So, the so it, if it is up to the government to legislate to decide what is true and what is false, so should the government decide whether um, President um, uh, Jiang Zemin uh, was dead um, ten years ago? So it is year 2021. If we have to rely on this law to suppress what people say, are we telling people that Hong Kong people don't have the 
wisdom to de decide what is true or not, I shall submit. Miss Alice Mack. Madam Deputy, Miss Elizabeth Ms. Elizabeth Quartz moved um, the motion enacting legislation to combat false information on the internet. Uh, I and the FTU support the motion. I think there should be a dedicated um, set of system and legislation to suppress those with ulterior motives to spread and um, falsehoods online. My colleague, Mr. Kwok Wai Kung, mentioned that many countries have legislate, legislated to combat false information, including the US and France. These are so called free democracies in the West. Still, they have legislation against false information and fake news because these issues have caused a serious threat to the national security or even election of presidents. That's why they have to have such legislation. In the past two years, we had a social turmoil and chaos. The situation, the situation was not um, unlike those countries, and we all suffered a lot because of the spread of uh, falsehoods online. In primary school, when we study uh, for the Chinese uh, exam, there is a part uh, about uh, storytelling with uh, pictures. Now, there are people very good at these. Now, if you put a primary uh, school student um, in the same frame with uh, two or three police officers, then these people would begin uh, making story. They would accuse the police officers of harassing uh, children, and then they would um, exaggerate the issue. The goal is to incite hatred towards the police. The photograph I was talking about uh, is true. It was back in uh, last November. It is the uh, police um, publication. There is a photograph with a primary school student um, in the same frame with two police officers. And then there was a smearing campaign. There were people saying that uh, the police officers uh, were intercepting um, the students. But the truth is the sister of that primary school student has lost her wallet and the police officers were helping him. Now the purpose of the smearing campaign was to incite hatred and fear and undermine people's trust in the law enforcement agencies. So this one photo with a, ch with a child standing with um, police officers uh, blown up, was blown up um, to such a scale. So you can imagine, so you will not be surprised uh, with those uh, rumors um, in involving um, the 31st of August Prince Edward Station saga and the I Girl stories and so on. Um, someone, my friend, my friend told me that they would go to the Prince Edward um, MTR station to uh, mourn the um, victims. I told her, "Well, this is um, the scam of the a scam of the century. Why are you believing it?" So I have personal experience in this regard because I have been a victim myself. Back in two thousand nineteen, the uh, former Legislative Council member, uh, Mr. Eddie Ju, and the former District Council Chairman, uh, Mr. Wang Wai Yin, quoted things that I didn't say. The purpose was to tell the public that I, or even the pro establishment camp, was inciting violence. The goal was to incite the public. In the end, I had to resort to legal means. I was supported by my um, by my friends and supporters. Um, I spent a few years time to get the evidence and went to court to get the apologies. It was not an easy deal. If I had not had the uh, professional opinions and help, I would still be a victim. So that's, that answered uh, Dr. Zhang Shung Tai's um, uh, concern about justification. You, can, you cannot rely upon yourself to clear up the rumors. I myself spent two years to take um, legal actions. So we have to have legislation to combat falsehoods. A mere a uh, member of the public cannot stand against uh, 
the onslaught of falsehoods. So I hope uh, the legislation can uh, be um, there can be legislation soon. Thank you, Mr. Chang Kin Po. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there is a survey. And, there is, and uh, the findings was that um, last year, uh, every day, uh, Hong Kong people spent uh, seven hours um, online. Three hours were spent on uh, videos and two hours on social media platforms. More than half of the surveys uh, of the of those surveyed would um, uh, watch news from the social media platform. Now, in this era, information is circulating uh, very fast. Falsehoods would um, spread very quickly. With uh, instant uh, messaging apps like Telegrams and LIHKG, uh, people can hide um, their identity and leave comments. They can make up stories without uh, taking responsibility. There are people who try to uh, boost their uh, uh, click rates and viewership. Uh, that's why they made up uh, false stories to attract eyeballs. Many people just rely on social media platforms uh, for news uh, without fact checking. They would. Um, be left in the echo chamber and uh, be misled. According to MIT in the US, on Twitter, the uh, spread of uh, fake news is much faster than um, true news. And the uh, it is more likely to be forwarded um, than uh, true news. Because uh, fake news are more attractive and more uh, interesting than uh, truthful news, that's why uh, people would forward them. Now, political fake news uh, is obviously spreading uh, faster and wider than uh, other kinds of fake news. Now, it would cause people to make false decisions. If uh, the majority of the public consider take a fake news to be true, then it would cause a huge um, destruction. People would remember, people would, um, would um, be incited to hate. For example, during the uh, Black Lives violence, people were incited to hate. Um, social rift was caused, and it takes a lot of time to mend it. So, uh, many countries are facing the uh, issue to combat false in information. In the U.S. and in Singapore, and um, there are laws to punish those who spread uh, false information. They are punishable to up to ten years. We have to strike a balance. We have to effectively um, stop those who maliciously this. Um, disseminates a false news, but we cannot um, catch the wrong people. So we have to have clear definition. For those who maliciously um, disseminate a falsehood, they have to be punished severely. For those who inadvertently have forwarded a falsehood, they have to be educated on uh, distinguishing between truthful and fake news. Now, uh, if there are rumors um, circulating online, the governments would clarify the issues uh, through um, the ISD and the TAMA talk. This is good. However, the government should make swifter response. Every second counts. The government should make clarifications on all uh, social media platforms and conventional media. Thank you. Mr. Wong Teng Kwong. Thank you, President. As the thing goes, uh, things that are true uh, cannot become false, and uh, things that are false cannot become true. Uh, Mr. Cheng Chong Tai said that uh, she, he mistrusted uh, his supporters who gave him a picture telling him that uh, the um, the um, XRL station uh, had his uh, glasses shattered by typhoon. Now, such as that was. Uh, just a minor thing, but then uh, some f disinformation can cause tremendous harm. Uh, in during Nazi Germany, uh, there was arson of a parliament building. Now, in the past few years, we have seen uh, voluminous false information being circulated. Now, uh, the purpose is not just to deceive a few. Rather, the intention behind such misinformation is to cause chaos in society, to incite riots, and that was most detrimental to our society, to people's livelihood, and our economy. It was most heartrending to see that, as of today, there are still people deceived. I fail to understand. 
of friends and the being people being killed inside the Prince Edward MTR station, and uh, the uh, girl whose eye was blinded, and a uh, people or girl uh, being raped in uh, Sanok Link. No, those uh, were lies made up with ulterior motive. The intention was to sabotage the Hong Kong South government and to damage its credibility. And yet, there are still people who believe in such rumors. It's easy to make up rumors, but it's so hard to uh, dispel them. So, uh, this motion by Miss Elizabeth Quart is uh, necessary and timely. I hope that when members of uh, the public tune into this debate in the council, they can think twice uh, with uh, such a malicious and uh, obnoxious uh, phenomenon. I think we should all uh, say no to them and legislate against uh, such matters. Thank you. Mr. Shio Kafai. President, I thank Ms. Elizabeth Quartz for moving this motion to combat false information on the Internet. Now, for those who have followed uh, debates in this council, they will know that we have um, um, rehearsed about this matter a number of times, and it is uh, uh, indeed uh, necessary to uh, have this motion debate because uh, uh, the thing is still uh, not settled and the harm done by f disinformation is great. Now, we still have the pandemic with us, and there are there is lots of false information being circulated out there. During the black cloud violence uh, in around June, uh, we uh, broke uh, we um, broke up for recess earlier than planned. So it was our intention to cause a. Uh, less trouble for the police and it's best for us to uh, remain invisible so as uh, not to bother the police to protect us. I stayed home, but then I was busy collecting information because uh, there was already false information going viral. I was um, sent pictures of my friends asking me uh, whether indeed uh, uh, the police were doing this and that. You can ask uh, Mr. Ao Chi Kuang, Under Secretary, every day I was sending information to the Secretary, telling him that uh, what I've received, and then he was very helpful in uh, helping us uh, to uh, find out the truth, and I've got a uh, friends uh, in the upper echelon of the police, I asked them to help me to clarify. I can tell you that uh, from all of the cases I've inquired into, they were all false. I'm so close to the administration. When I received such information, it took me time to clarify. So um, how about members of the public who received such uh, appalling information, what were they supposed to do? As we all know, within a matter of few hours, uh, such information might have really gone viral and might have really traveled around the world and back. So during the black cloud violence, many young people uh, step gone to the stage of no return simply because of that. Well, that a uh, girl whose eye was uh, uh, blinded, now uh, those uh, uh, in the opposition camp are no longer here. They are covered one eye here. And what about uh, people who were allegedly killed in on the 31st of August? Uh, they could say that our uh, parents who called the police or reported to the police would be sent to Xinjiang. And that defied common sense. The problem is, if you do not clarify and if you do not dispel such rumors, people would believe it, them. Now, as Scott White Kong said, you need only uh, one person to spread rumors and uh, to clarify them. You need a um, multitude of uh, officers. So uh, the police uh, should come out. Should the police come out uh, to um, explain and uh, clarify those rumors. 
Unfortunately, many young people were influenced and poisoned. They went to the uh, front line and they just picked up a bottle and many of them are now waiting to be sentenced. So you can see the harm of such false information. Now, oh, we see young people or, or police officers are barbecuing or playing chairs on the road. In fact, this is the original uh, picture. They were working there. But for those uh, who uh, just uh, believe uh, the, these are pictures and I uh, help to share them. People would think that all policemen are bad. During the uh, black clad violence, I also saw news uh, that were juicy and uh, to my favor. Well, I always uh, checked whether they were true or not. If they were true, or if they were not true, they should not be shared. I think we should only say things that are true, and uh, we uh, will we um, have we're justified, and there is no need to circulate false information. Thank you, Mr. Chiang Kuok Kwan. Uh, there is uh, this Chinese saying: when uh, three uh, persons come together, they can become a tiger. Well, there was a this story during the uh, um, period of uh, the um, warrior stakes. Well, uh, one official uh, was going on an official duty, and then uh, he went to see the king, and he said that, now if somebody tell you that a tiger was on the street, would you trust him? And uh, the king said no. And then uh, the official asked once again if the second person uh, comes to you saying that there is a tiger out there, would you uh, believe him? And uh, the king said, well, mm, maybe. And then what if a third person come al comes along and tells you that there is a tiger out there, would you uh, believe that it's true? And the king said, I have no choice but to believe it. Now the official said that it's impossible that a tiger can appear in the street. But then uh, when there are more spreading the rumor, then you have no choice but to uh, believe it. So when I'm on uh, my official uh, trip, uh, perhaps people may uh, say lies about me, and please uh, beware and do not be blinded by such ties, uh, by lies. And the king promised the official that you can rest assured. And then uh, when the official had left the state, many people came uh, to a bad mouth the official. At first, the king did not trust them, but then uh, he uh, was shaken gradually. And when the official came back, he uh, came back to discover that the king uh, had already distanced himself from him. And so um, when three persons are saying, telling the same lie, then uh, people may easily take that as the truth. All right? The emperor back then had no mobile phone, no computer, and yet uh, he uh, fell prey to such lies. So people talked about uh, the blinded lady and uh, also uh, people being killed uh, on the 31st of August. So now there is the internet to circulate such rumors, and you can see that false information is more powerful and harmful than uh, back then. It can cause a whole family uh, to suffer. It can cause um, uh, a government to uh, crumble, and uh, it can cause chaos in society. In 2014, uh, there was a case in the Court of Final Appeal, and it was ruled that the internet uh, was not a public domain, and therefore we cannot rely on the dishonest use of computer or dishonest access to a computer uh, to uh, prosecute people for uh, such offenses. And then in 2014 April, in a case involving Hip Hop pri uh, Primary School, uh, the court ruled that uh, we could no longer rely on that section of the crimes ordinance uh, about dishonest or access to computer with dishonest intent. So we have limited uh, legal tools to tackle 
the circulation of false information on the internet. Of course, you may say that uh, we have um, the um, criminal uh, legislation about uh, infringement of uh, persons of privacy and uh, also intimidation and also uh, there is also the common law offense of um, of a seditious intent but then false information circulating false information may not involve the um, acts I just referred to for instance are uh, the case of uh, a woman allegedly blinded in one eye and uh, also um, killings uh, inside Prince Edward Station. So on and all, we must have a law to tackle false information before we can uh, really cope with the problem. With these remarks, I support Ms. Elizabeth Quartz's motion. Mr. Stephen Ho, thank you, Mr. President. I thank Ms. Elizabeth Quartz for moving this motion. In other words, we're talking about fake news and how we should combat the fake news. Now, Mr. Horace Jung and other members have spoken, and I have this feeling that uh, there will always be um, unscrupulous tricks to circumvent the law. So whenever there are fake news, the government would come out to reprimand those circulating fake news or to clarify rumors, but it's not effective. When lies are spreading everywhere, it's difficult to s reprimand the uh, culprits. Uh, first of all, I thank the secretaries here. Uh, you've been doing rework. Now let me talk about the key words. Prince Edward Station, Sanok Ling, the blinded lady, and the Wuhan pneumonia. It's COVID-19, in other words. And then uh, Bell's palsy and a mix of uh, vaccines manufactured by different manufacturers. These are the keywords of fake news that we have spent a lot of time and social resources in refuting rumors. Now, the constructive forces here have also spent a lot of energy in refuting rumors, including the DAB. So to think ahead, we need to co consider how we are able to save time and resources to do more real work other than to fight rumors. Well, I actually left something out. It's about an ointment in Sha Tin. Somebody wreaked havoc inside the premises, and then uh, somebody, in an attempt to uh, provide treatment, actually smeared fake blood onto the victim, and then claimed the police officers for falsely arresting them. And we checked the video footages on the internet. And we try to find out how we can come. We could combat false information, and then um, the other side tried to uh, justify their action, and they claimed that in fact uh, the volunteer was only putting on ointment for the victim. Well, in other words, it took us a really long time uh, to refute lies and rumors, and leveraging on this loophole. The other side could then continue to mislead the public so that they could win mileage points in the DC election, for example. Of course, in a court. Well, I should thank Secretary for Security, Mr. Tang, the previous police commissioner, for arresting all the culprits and rioters uh, a year on. They've been sent to court. And indeed, After a year and a half, you're able to bring them to justice. But what about the damage done to individuals? Meanwhile, it's unfair to them. The SAR government should consider how fake news can be prevented. I don't think we can eradicate the problem. We just need to find a way to combat them. I think that the government has already done a lot recently. And apart from enacting legislation, we need to educate the public. Why do people believe in fake news so easily? Mr. Horace Chung talked about a Chinese classic story, and um, 
or let's say after this motion being passed in the council, I don't think anyone would be interested in reading the theories. Uh, people tend to uh, be attracted to sensational, negative, scandals, new, scandalous news. And well, if we include in the headline, Mr. Casper Choi is now causing trouble, uh, so and so, then this would be a sensational, attractive headline. So we need to tackle those who would like to gain political mileage. We cannot resolve the issue just by enacting legislation against fake news. We need concerted effort from the community. We need to restore the moral, moral values. Now Apple Daily has come to an end. Be it has met its demise exactly because uh, it um, disseminates fake news. I, I think my time is up for so more later. Mr. Michael Lok, I am happy to read that uh, Mr. Kwok Wai Kerr, well, he's actually moving an amendment to Ms. Kwok's original motion on enacting legislation to combat false information on the internet. There is a need to combat false information, especially the information on the internet. According to a recent survey, the intelligence portions of the human race seems to be on the decline. I don't know whether this research is accurate. It comes from the academic sector, but the crux of the um, research is that we have a lot of fake news on the internet and disinformation spreads on the internet for various purposes, for commercial, for political reasons. So that uh, even something that totally defies logic and common sense would attract the attention of people. People would believe it. We For flat earthers, nowadays um, there are people who follow the f uh, flat earth theory. And there is even an international conference. In Hong Kong, we had um, the uh, death on the 31st of August, Prince Edward Station, and the blinded lady. And then, the, uh, and then miraculously, the vision of both eyes of the lady had been restored, and he, she could happily move on to another country. Even for smart lampposts, there were accusations of uh, storing people's data and using 5G could spread COVID-19, so on and so forth. Be it attacks from the global community or the political or the local political arena, we need to combat false information. We must not allow lies to spread. For the unscrupulous politicians in the U.S., like such as Mike Pompeo, they are really shameless and they are proud of themselves for telling lies. It should not be the case. In history, even before century, there was a piece of legislation to stop people from lying. Uh, I studied uh, in a Christian school, and from the Bible, the Ninth Commandment uh, actually referred to um, the law that one must not lie to frame others. This is not about white lies. Now, if you say that Mr. Michael Look is really handsome, is a white lie out of good intention, and I'm going to accept it. But if you're going to wrong someone by telling lies, you are stirring up social conflict. And this is what we seek to regulate. The offender should be punished. Around the world, there are similar uh, legislation. In 2018, Network Enforcement Act in Germany was enacted to prevent the spread of fake news and hate speech on the internet. And service providers would be required to remove the content within seven days, or else the company would be subject to a fine of up to 460 million dollars and the person responsible will be subject to a 47 million Hong Kong dollar fine. In 2019, the Singapore enacted the Protection from Online Falsehoods and Manipulation Act and it, the act covers individuals as well as companies. Those who fail to comply in instruction to remove the contact would 
content will be subject to a financial penalty of 291,000 Hong Kong dollars and five years imprisonment. And if uh, there is further non-compliance, the fine would go up to 580,000 uh, dollars and 10 years imprisonment. There are regulations around the world, exactly because uh, of the uh, latest internet culture. People tend to use handles um, and hide their real identities so that they can circulate fake news freely. We must not allow that co to continue. We need to move. Uh, keep, we need to keep up with the times. In the past. We have major TV stations and traditional uh, press outlets, and they would uh, behave themselves. Whereas nowadays, uh, anyone could operate a media outlet and without any regulation. I think we're very clear about what happened in 2019. False information and fake news undermined national security. The stabilizing anti-China forces colluded with uh, foreign forces, and it's very important that we regulate this, uh, regulated against that. Mr. Gary Chen. Thank you, Mr. President. I speak in support of Mr. Quartz, uh, Ms. Quartz's motion. I think one, one uh, security issue around the world is fake news and false information. The damage is not only seen in Hong Kong. Even in a free and democratic country in the U.S., you will see the damage. The former U.S. President Donald Trump was accused of circulating fake news, and he did not concede his defeat in the election, and he even encouraged his supporters to besiege the uh, Capitol Hill. From TV screens, we saw how rioters charged uh, into the uh, Senate and it's totally um, in it, it totally defies logic. This is because all along people have been brainwashed by fake information. Such that very easily people was incited. And unfortunately, they may not understand that they've made a mistake. Well, previously, uh, we uh, recently we had a case of um, an assailant attacking or stabbing a police officer and then uh, committed suicide. And in another case about confiscation of proceeds, they had been reading. Um, Fake news for a long time, and because of self radicalization, they became culprits. One was age 50, the other 39. They should be mature adults. And why would they subject themselves to terrorist attacks such as stabbing a police officer? F apparently, they were influenced by uh, antagonistic, uh, hostile media's media outlets. And that is why. Even those who used to have common sense would act on the contrary and harm the society as well as themselves. In face of the problem, a responsible government should not sit on its hands. The government should act more proactively in combating fake news so as to restore order in society. I asked a oral, I asked an oral question just now, in the question session, and I asked about the blinded lady, and it was the outcome of fake news. First of all, the the lady never became blind, but because of um, media hyping up the news people started to believe that to be true. And then people started to harbor hatred against the police and the government. You may recall back then, even medics and paramedics in hospitals believed in the story of the lady who got blinded, and they even came out to protest. So even for those who are well educated, they would be they would fall victim to fake news, let alone the more innocent general public. 
So we need to legislate against fake news to ensure public order and especially to protect our young people from being uh, influenced by fake news. Now, some members uh, said that uh, if you regulate against fake news, you'll be undermining press freedom and freedom of speech. But this is a fallacy because fake news by name means fake, definitely. It would not affect press freedom and freedom of speech. We need to have freedom of speech and free press in Hong Kong to allow the public uh, learn about the truth of the matter, but fake news is something else. It is like an addiction to drugs. You may have a you may have a head. You may feel high after taking drugs, but the damage is is akin to um, drugs. At the end of the day, your own future will be undermined, and our future, the society's future, will be undermined. I support the motion. Mr. Leung Shi Cheng, President, concerning the motion moved by Ms. Elizabeth Court enacting legislation to combat false information on the internet, I give my support and I also support the amendments uh, moved by uh, Mr. Ko Wai Kung. So, fake news, just by the sound of it, um, it is uh, problematic. The government has done nothing or uh, formulated no measures to tackle fake news, especially since year 2019. The internet was flooded with fake news and falsehoods, including um, the uh, 831, um, the 31st of August um, incident, the iGo, and um, so on, as well as Sun of Ling. These are complete uh, fabrications, but the government did not do enough to tackle them and allow them to fester. So many people um, took these uh, stories to be true. They paid tribute um, to uh, those um, alleged victims and they surrounded uh, police stations. This is the doing of falsehoods and fake news. The government has to act and prevent and stop fake news from misleading the public and uh, cause uh, unfairness. Actually, the government has um, different legislation um, to tackle different crimes, for example, uh, false instruments, uh, false statements, and false declaration. However, false news is not an offense. That's why people think the government is not acting to uh, tackle these problems which are plaguing the uh, community. In year 2008, uh, in uh, year 1989, there was um, a um, tragic case um, in a uh, Tin Peng estate. After the family tragedy, uh, the um, a, a news a newspaper um, disseminated uh, fake news that uh, this uh, Chen Kin Hong um, about this Chen Kin Hong. So the Apple Daily. Um, Got a public attention. So um, this Mr. Chen Kin Hong uh, was a victim of fake news, and also um, the public was um, the public's um, emotion was um, disturbed by the fake news. So I think that the government. Um, uh, really didn't do enough to tackle the situation. As mentioned by other members, in different countries, 
there are already legislations against false news or false information or fake news. How do we define fake news? Well, uh, for truthful um, news, we have to uh, ensure the authenticity of the news. So how can we distinguish between um, truthful news and fake news? For a reasonable person, of course, uh, the distinction is clear. However, if the um, news media chooses to present a falsehoods as um, truthful news, then um, people may be um, uh, fooled, especially uh, for those um, medias uh, with um, credibility. People would easily believe them. So um, I hope the social media platform as well as um, media would not use uh, false fake news to uh, fool the public anymore. I so submit I support the original motion. Any other members who would like to speak? Ms. Elizabeth Quartz, now you may speak on the amendment. I don't Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I thank 21 members who have spoken in support of my motion, and I thank Mr. Kwok Wai Kang and Mr. Tommy Chang for their amendments. The DAB supports the two amendments, and I'd like to give my support to the idea that apart from legislation, we need to take a multi-pronged approach in tackling disinformation. Mr. Kwok Wai Kang's amendment mentions using technology to differentiate false information. I um, in full agreement. We have a lot of R&D teams around the world uh, researching into the use of AI and big data in tracing and on a preliminary basis differentiating fake news, especially when fake news around the world nowadays are actually um, those generated automatically by robots such that the authenticity is very difficult to be verified. 90% of the news may be true, but the remaining 10% may cause people to easily believe in the, in them. And that is why the government should put in more resources so that we use innovation technology to tackle the problem. Uh, in my speech, I talk about media literacy. With fake news, circulating on the internet, there is a problem with uh, our citizens' media literacy. We don't differentiate real news from fake ones, and we just casually forward them. Dr. Chang Shung Tai just now mentioned that if you enact legislation, you will be uh, suppressing people's freedom, and you should educate the public instead. Uh, when we now see the circulating of rumors and uh, such as the blind lady and the August 31st uh, death, there, we know there is a need to tackle the disinformation and we and whilst at the same time uh, safeguard freedom of speech. When a piece of fake news is circulated a million times, it would become real. And in this day and age, this could happen within the snap of a fing of fingers. So you cannot rely on people's wisdom to differentiate uh, fake news. It is important to cultivate media literacy. In other countries such as Finland, they have media education in public schools, and even in kindergartens, they start this education. And in senior secondary level, innovative courses would be devised to help students check the authenticity of uh, news and to exercise analytical thinking. And starting from 2015, the government appealed to the whole society to to fact check together, and they also engage experts to devise strategies in response to the problem. So, as far as Hong Kong is concerned, the Education Bureau should set up a committee on media literacy so that we have a proper curriculum included in the civic education subject. I think this is important. The other point is raised by Mr. Kwok Wai Kung. He mentioned that there should be a fact-checking database. Uh, he hasn't elaborated on the idea. Now, my suggestion is that at the moment we have different government departments clarifying rumors and disinformation, such as the police and Food and Health Bureau. Different departments could be victims of, mis of false information. 
However, there is no consolidated platform for the public to read everything in one go. So such a platform should be set up because usually when I receive information asking if it's true, I need to uh, look for the relevant departments as well. Um, the U.S. has a rapid response team. We can consider that Mr. Tommy Chang in his amendment uh, mentions a specific target um, of uh, p different online platforms. And I think under the Communications Authority, a special task force should be set up to draw code of practice that are specifically applicable to online platforms, uh, such as other countries, so that we have different prongs to tackle this information. I want to emphasize, Mr. President, that we're not targeting normal journalistic work, we're not targeting the general public, but rather fake information that harms that harms society. It poses a great harm to society. I urge members to support my motion so that we can join hands in combating false information. Secretary for Security. President, first I want to thank members for giving us so much valuable information on uh, enacting legislation to combat false information on the internet. As the former commissioner of the police, I have a first and painful experience of uh, such um, things. Now, I am um, afraid what I'm going to speak uh, uh, might cause a misunderstanding among the public. I'd like to say that now we are talking about uh, fake news, and we'll talk about uh, fake news are being uh, spread voluciously with uh, sedacious intent. And this is very different uh, from what Dr. Uh, Chang Kung Tai said, uh, um, that is about speech uh, with uh, dissenting views. I have uh, to uh, clear clarify this misunderstanding. And Dr. Chang Chung Tai said that what the government says, it is fake news, it is fake news. I must say that when there is a prosecution, then it is for the court to decide whether it is fake news. It's not the government say now, if uh, hearing that uh, people have been misled into thinking that the government would abuse the proposed legislation, this is uh, very regrettable. Right, I'd like to respond to what uh, members have said just now. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, uh, fake news would cause tremendous harm to society, in particular uh, false information with fabricated facts to incite hatred against the government. The Secretary for Home Affairs will look into overseas experience uh, in tackling false information as a reference uh, for our way forward. Uh, pending uh, the enactment of uh, re relevant information, the government will use all uh, feasible and practicable administrative and legal channels to crack down on false information, will surely strictly enforce the law to crack down on all law-breaking behavior. If anyone is disseminating improper information, then uh, we will use the crimes ordinance and also the Hong Kong national security law to um, pursue. We spend our efforts in maintaining public safety and public order to protect lives and property of our people. We investigate all criminal acts of committed online and enforce the law rigorously. Now, uh, members uh, raised uh, a number of suggestions and uh, questions in their speeches. I uh, have noted all of them, and some uh, members talked about uh, stopping the operation of websites that disseminate false information. Now, the police will investigate all acts of um, or acts of a dissemination of false information or with the intention to incite hatred and violence. Now, if uh, such uh, electronic messages are quite likely to undermine national security or to incite uh, the commission of national security related laws, then we will uh, use the implementation details under the Hong Kong NSL to, uh, to stop and uh, sanction such messages. I appeal to the public do not easily be taken into by misinformation. The security bureau and the police will, as always, use all practical administrative and legislative means to come back to dissemination of false uh, information and fake news so that uh, we can all say no to uh, violence and uh, society can uh, be back to the normal track. Secretary for Home Affairs. President, first of all, I would like to thank um, the uh, 20 members uh, for their invaluable views on uh, enacting legislation to combat false information on the internet. I will now make a consolidated re re uh, reply on several points raised during the debate. 
freedom of speech is guaranteed by the basic law. However, the uh, freedom is not without restriction. There are no statutes combating um, online enforcers. However, um, criminal intimidation of fans under the uh, crimes ordinance and blackmail uh, under um, theft ordinance and other ordinance applies uh, to um, speeches made online as well, as well as um, the uh, offences of uh, libel and um, infringement of uh, private um, uh, privacy. Since the implementation of the national security law last year, uh, immediate results have been seen. Stability has returned and people's safety is protected again. Articles 21, 23, 27 and 29 of the national, national security law prohibit acts to incite secession and carry out terrorism. In last week and today, the government has made replies on the relevant issues and also um, under Article 43 of the NSL, the Secretary for Security may make a request to the publisher of a message of the service provider to remove the message or, approved, uh, or uh, provide assistance. I think uh, we all agree that national security is the um, top priority of um, any country. Violating national security law is, um, serious, is a serious offence and we would deal with um, every offences uh, endangering national security seriously. Mr. Kowaiko and other members mentioned that some foreign countries have legislated against false information. We note that some jurisdictions overseas have introduced laws to regulate online speech or information. However, the laws differ in terms of their scope, enforcement, framework, and legislative intent. For example, in Germany, the law seeks to remove hate speech, fake news, and illegal contents from social media promptly. In Australia, Internet service providers are required to promptly remove violent contents. In France, the law focuses on election misinformation, which is published to disrupt public order and affect elections. In Singapore, the law prohibits any falsehood, which would undermine public safety, peace, or Singapore's relationship with other countries. In the UK, a white paper recommended that internet service providers should bear legal responsibility for illegal online contents detrimental to a person or the country, and that an independent regulator be established to remove such contents, which incite violence and encourage suicide and online bullying. Contents involving terrorism or child abuse should be subject to even more stringent regulation. In addition to the countries mentioned above, the Parliament of Malaysia passed the Anti-Fake News Act 2018 on the 2nd of April 2018. However, in four months and 14 days, the Act was repealed during the third reading as the House of Representatives in December 2019. It shows that fake news is a wide-ranging and sensitive issue. Simply put, uh, national security is the foundation of a prosperous society and is the uh, cornerstone of to protect the people. Hong Kong, as an inalienable part of the um, People's Republic of China, has the responsibility to uphold national security. And every Hong Kong uh, citizen has to take up the responsibility to uh, uphold um, sovereign integrity. In Article 3 of the um, NSL, the law enforcement agencies uh, should, in accordance with the law, uh, prohibit actions that would um, jeopardize national security. And also, the HASAR government should enhance its work um, on protecting national security. For um, national security issues in uh, schools, um, uh, the society, as well as uh, online, the government should um, uh, do a better publicity work and as well as managing um, these uh, platforms. Um, the uh, issue of fake news um, is something of um, international concerns. So today, our members quoted many examples, not just uh, locally. Um, in overseas uh, jurisdictions, uh, countries have to step up their measures to combat the spreading of uh, false news and false information. The government will make reference to um, the experience 
of other countries and jurisdictions to deal with um, fake news. And we will identify a local loopholes and um, um, think of the next step. So there are only several months remaining in this legislative term. So we are afraid that we will not be able to table the bill before the end of this legislative session. But uh, rest assured, like the uh, chief executive said, we would promptly and seriously um, tackle the issue. I repeat, uh, most of the laws uh, applicable to the real world are applicable to internet world as well. So um, internet users uh, have the responsibility to use the internet um, responsibly. I urge people to be on guard uh, against rumors and please pay attention to the uh, this clarification made by the government to not be misled by false uh, falsehoods. I now invite Mr. Kowai Kern to move the amendments. President, I move my amendments. I propose the question to you that Mr. Kowai Kern's amendments be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Would those in favor please raise their hands? Ms. Uh, Dr. Jiang Chong Tai claims division. The division bell will be rung for five minutes.
person. Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. I display the results. Members from FCs 23 present, 22 for. Members from GCs 17 present, 16 for, 1 against. The motion is agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Lee. President, I move that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting in respect of the motion on legislation to come back to the examination of false information, this council shall proceed within to the division after the division bell has been wrong for one minute. I now propose to question you to and that is the motion moved by Mr. Reed be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion passed. I declare that should there be Further divisions being claimed at this m meeting in the respect of this motion, this council shall proceed for the division bell after the division bell has been wrong for one minute. Uh, as um, Mr. Cotwhite comes, our amendment has been passed. Mr. Tommy Jung has withdrawn his amendment. Please support my motion. Thank you. I now propose the question to you that the motion as amended by Mr. Cotwhite Jung be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Dr. Zhang Chong Tang claims the division. The division bell will be rung for one minute. Voting begins. Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. Results displayed. Members from FCs 24 present, 22 for 1 against. Renter from GC 17 present, 16 for 1 against. The question is agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion as amended passed. Members' motion with no legislative effect. Mr. Chenki.